Good morning. Good morning. This is Marcia from Evelina's Way. Uh, it is a humid day here in northern Arkansas, and we are going to be talking about fly control today. Uh, but I wanted to introduce you to my chickens. They are out this morning. They're not under the tree. And it's the cool of the morning. And I just wanted you to, to introduce you to them. So here we go. This is Ginger. She's a lighter colored. We have two grown buffs right now and they each lay eggs. They lay brown eggs. These are my three girls. This is Diva. These are my Divas. One, two, and three back over there. They, um, they think they own everything. But they're very good leg air, egg layers and they, they lay all different colors of olive colored eggs. They are olive eggers. Hazel, I'm sorry, Ginger is a buff. And then we have the babies, which will be leaving probably pretty soon. Um, when they start laying and we decide if they're roosters or not, then we will um, disperse them out to our children and our grandchildren. This is, this is Hazel right here. She's a little bit redder in color than Ginger. And she's waiting on her food. She's, she's hungry. But they can wait just a little while. I'm gonna be talking about fly control today. Um, when you have chickens, you're gonna have flies. And in this part of Arkansas, not only are you gonna have flies, but you're also gonna have mosquitoes. So we're gonna talk about flies mostly, but also how to control mosquitoes in your home. So I'm going to show you some products that I have um, that helps a lot. One is these fly traps. Let me turn it around for you and let you see. They're called milk jug fly traps. They have this little thing right here and as you can see it really works. These are all flies that are in here. It comes with this attractant and you put it in there with water and it has been these are flies I don't have to deal with. They go right to there. They prefer that even over the chickens and I bought this at Tractor Supply or Orslands, Buckeyes, one of them. This really, really works not to have to deal with these flies that are already in here. I also use, um, I also use diatomaceous earth. And um, I'll show you a picture of that. I've got a picture taken and I'll show you that. And it really makes a difference. This attractant down here is really smelly. But it's here. It's not near my house. It doesn't bother the chickens because they have less flies they have to deal with in their coop. And so this, this is amazing. This is my out, outside um, help when it comes to flies. Now when we have flies that go into the house, I have another barrier and I'll show you that. Um, it, what I've done is put an automatic sprayer that I bought at Orsland's and it's called Country Vet and it's mosquito and fly spray to get and it makes a difference. This attractant down here is really smelly but it's here. It's not near my house. It doesn't bother the chickens because they have less flies they have to deal with in their coop and so this this is amazing. This is my out, outside um, help when it comes to flies. Now when we have flies that go into the house, I have another barrier. And I'll show you that. Um, 
it what I've done is put an automatic sprayer that I bought at Orsland's and it's called Country Vet and it's mosquito and fly spray together and it automatically sprays every 15 minutes just a little and I put it between my main door and my storm door with my storm door having just a little bit of um, I've opened to the air that way the smell of it doesn't come inside the house um, I don't want to breathe it but man it keeps the mosquitoes and it keeps the flies out of the house now when you go to buy this country vet fly and mosquito spray and you want both fly and mosquito you have to get both fly and mosquito it's on the label the, the spray um, if you get just flies it's not going to cover for mosquitoes so it's a double thing for me it works for both and I've been extremely happy with it uh, we um, if I had to deal with a lot of flies I don't know that I could have chickens uh, also uh, the diatomaceous earth I was talking about helps with helps with flies but I also put it in their grazing places let me let me show you in their their sleeping places I'll turn that around to you under that tree right there is where they are and I also put them in their nesting boxes um, on their in their run area which is what this is and it I mean on those dry days I'll put diatomaceous earth probably out once a week and when they give themselves dust baths they also are putting that diatomaceous earth up um, under their wings we've had no problems none at all I also add diatomaceous earth to my 50 pound uh, grain that I get which I feed them once a day with that we don't have we, we're not free ranged here they are they have access to everything they need but I always give them a little bit of um, extra feed from the farm store and I use a cup of diatomaceous earth to a 50 pound bag and I just kind of stir it around as I go and um, they have never suffered from parasites never it just there's something about it that's just like an all-purpose uh, situation that helps with their gut it helps just keep those parasites down that way they can be and do the things that chicken like chickens like to do without the burden of, of flies mosquitoes and parasites I also do diatomaceous earth in my garden when I see a, a plant that's starting to get holes in it I will do di diatomaceous earth uh, and it seems to it seems to have really managed things I I'm really pleased with it I've, I've got some other natural things I've been doing but I don't know the diatomaceous earth is another one of those things that I don't I wouldn't run my a little bitty farm without it I uh, just and, and for the money you get a big old bag I think for twenty dollars and it has lasted me for I'm not even used it it's six months because I just use it a little at a time and it has been amazing uh, what it does <laughs> it's just wonderful so um, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you over to the door where I've got my country uh, life vet mosquito and fly spray and show you the other uh, barrier that I have to keep things out of my house so we're gonna walk over there right now This is what I'm talking about right here. This is a sprayer, and it, let's see if I can get this right. I'm learning, y'all, so be patient. Um, it's Country Vet, and it is in the little can, and it, it this goes off every 15 minutes and really, really helps. It's on a timer inside, and if you go into the store, don't get the spray, get the ones with the little nozzles. Let me go ahead and take this apart.
can push that little button right there. Okay, here we go. This is what it looks like when you take it apart. And this is the mosquito and the fly, the country vet. And right here is a little nozzle. Sprays through this, right there. And it sprays every 15 minutes. And then I've got it set at 3000. And it just seems to work the best. I, It's got four batteries in it. And it just seems like it lasts the whole season without problem whatsoever. So this goes between my door and my my um, storm door and I keep my windows down just a little on my storm door and I tell you it has been amazing to keep flies out of our house I love it it goes back together like this easy as pie and I just leave it here on the floor I don't want it spraying me in the face if I was going to put it on the wall I don't want it spraying me in the face so I put it on the on the floor between the doors and when it goes, then it just goes up so high, and I don't have to worry about it hitting me in the face if I was to come out the, the spray. And this works. It's a gem. It works really well. Okay. I hope that you enjoyed my video this morning. Um, like I say, this is Marsha from Evelina's Way. And I'll tell you a little story about my great-grandmother. Her name was Evelina, and she was a milk farmer in the 1920s and 30s when our country was kind of changing to technology. I mean, not like technology like we have now, but I think there was a phone on their block, not in their house, and sure not in their hand. Um, they had a cistern in their house on the back porch and they drew their water from their cistern. My granny was extremely clean. Uh, back in that era, you had to be aware of so many things that we don't have to worry about today. Like, you know, we had to worry about malaria from mosquitoes. We had to worry about um, tuberculosis, which is something we don't, we don't have near the worries about. They worried about pneumonia, because pneumonia was deadly in the 1920s. You got pneumonia, you know, there wasn't running to the doctor. You might have got, could have got some sulfa, but I don't even know if sulfa was there. So my great-grandmother, Evelina, she lived by her wits, and she lived by hard work and determination. She didn't have a lot. She milked eight cows. Her and her husband milked eight cows. A day and they had a little dairy and my mother tells the story of when she was a girl she would go out with her grandpa and would take the milk bottles off the steps of the houses where they sold their milk and then replace them with another one glass bottles they would take the empty glass bottles back to the little farm now we're talking a five acre farm here we're not talking 20, 50, 100, we're talking very small amounts um, and hard work every day. Um, I don't know how she, how they milked all of that and did all of that, but she'd bring those jars back. My mother would bring all those little milk jars back. My granny would wash them with boiling hot water, sanitize them. And then they would do the process all over again with milk. Uh, my granny, Evelina, was an amazing woman. My mother is an amazing woman. She's not the same type of woman as my granny, but she is amazing. And her memories inspired this channel. All the things that she did when she was a child, and they didn't have money. They had acreage, five acres, and a lot of determination. They killed a pig every year. They, uh, I mean, it was about food. Their life was about food. And we have gotten so far away from that in this country that our life, you know, if, if we don't grow a garden, we're not going to starve in the winter. If they didn't grow a garden, they starved in the winter. 
So we need to understand what the, that food is the difference between um, wealth and poverty. And I'm not talking monetarily, money-wise. I'm talking about sustainability, your health. Um, we, when God made man, he put him in a garden. And there's a reason for that. You can get a whole entire physical workout from working in a garden. Um, he didn't he didn't just give them everything they needed. He gave them everything they needed to, to do with work. He wanted them to work in the garden. That has not changed today. If we would have a garden, it doesn't have to be a big garden. I've got a very small little garden, but I work in it every day. Either I'm cutting or planting. You have a little time between planting and harvest that you can do other things. And, you know, I go to bed in air-conditioned house. My granny did not. There was no such thing as air conditioning. You, she, she cooked and did everything on a wood stove, which heated the house. And you imagine in these summers, when it reaches 80, 90 degrees, and you're cooking on a wood stove that heats the house, it is amazingly hot. Um, there's no way we could survive that. I want to learn to survive things like that because it may be the difference between life and death. You know, we can always make money. You can always make money. And money helps. I mean, I mean, but if you can turn your energy and your effort into money without spending money, saving money, uh, a dollar earned is, is one that's not spent. So if you can grow your food, you know, green beans and be you don't have to get a load of things. You get a handful of green beans every day. You put two days together and you got a mess of green beans with a little scoop of butter. And um, I have, have gone in the past to the Mennonites and got my raw milk and made cheese and made all the things that you can make with milk. And one of these days, Lord's willing, I can have a, a place where I can have all that. But right now... I'm on my little quarter of an acre. I've got a few chickens that make eggs every day for me. And I've also got just a little garden. And I'm so thankful and grateful for that because if something fails in my garden and it just fails to live, I'm good. I have learned, okay, what do I look for next time? If we don't try, we can't succeed. And if we don't try, we don't fail. And if we don't fail, we don't learn what we can do better next time. And really, when we fail or when things go bad, it's when you find out what you're really made of. You know, you just think, can I, can I survive this? If we can think of it as in survival mode, not in some panic, but just, okay, what if we could never walk into a grocery store again? What if we could not do that? What would be the first thing we would do? Um, I mean, and, and, and we're not faced with that. Other countries are faced with that. A food sustainability, other countries don't have that. Uh, we're living in a country that's so blessed, but we are spoiled, so spoiled. And we're disheartened and we're sad. And we just need a simple life. And even though I've got a, just a small space here, I feel so blessed to have it. Because there's so many people who have less than I do. And I always want people to know that, you know, we can all, we can do better. We can have better. We can do more with care, with love. Being a good neighbor is immensely important. Um, I've got neighbors right across from me. And I've got a neighbor that takes care of me. My husband's disabled. And he helps me with my grass. Uh, there's just, you know, neighbors make up, can make up so much good to be a good neighbor, to share what you have, to share what you make, uh, make a cake or extra cookies or whatever. You're putting your effort and time into it in a thank you and an appreciate you and talking to your neighbors. That's, that's what makes things good. Um, my children are amazing they work very hard they 
my girls are mothers or stay home mothers and they work for extra when they can um, my daughter-in-law is a nurse and she, you know they're just amazing uh, amazing kids they keep the focus of the family in their sights and that is the most important thing we can do uh, living like we don't have money which in this country we do uh, we just have to not rely on everybody for everything there are times all of us need help and and that's fine I mean God didn't make us to where we didn't need help he made us so we could get help and so that we could live a Christian life by helping others that's our goal our goal here on earth is sustainability our food sustainability helping others but my ultimate goal is heaven I want to to be in heaven and I want to be a good person here and I, I, I can't express the peace that you have yes I have my down days I get sad I get to where I just want to stay in the bed all day everybody has those days but if we really look at what we have and the beauty of what we have the birds singing um, chickens playing all the things we are so blessed. We are so blessed to have these things. I want to say God bless you all. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Um, Fourth of July was yesterday. And it just makes us think what our country is now. And what it was in 1776. When things were hard. And they were fighting for everything. And they gave their lives. And in all the wars since then to keep our country free and to help other people have a life. Um, we need to be patriotic and look out for others. I want you all to have a wonderful day.